who's Shabazz Tahseer? I was kidnapped by the Taliban. <laughs> Is that your first uh, By a group affiliated with the Taliban. The Taliban actually helped uh, in my journey to freedom. Hmm. And you're also the son of governor, ex-governor. I am the fo- son of the former governor of Punjab, uh, Mr. Shaheed Salman Tahseer. And uh, I am a businessman. I work in real estate. And now I am an author. Your, your very Peace Towers of. is coming up. Yes, you are. It's, an amazing yeah. book, by the way. I should, I should give the shout out. The first thing. Uh, like this book. I read it. And Beitreen and Lost to the World, A Memoir of Faith, Family, and Five Years in Terrorist Captivity, Shabazz Tasir. I got a special in this one that I will keep my whole life. Thank you so much, Abhi. Uh, I love you, bro. At <laughs> some point, I will... Uh, Or read it out as well, but this one's about you. So, what's the matter? Just uh, nervous and looking forward. We've got our two friends, Lisa and Salman here as well. Moral support. <laughs> <laughs> Did you pick them up when you found out that Mia's not coming? <laughs> <laughs> but after uh, the previous podcast, ke baad, this time around, I've got this uh, chronological order. Because people are really interested in your story and what happened. So I thought we we just stick to that and not do our usual bullshit that we do, um, which no, I enjoy. No Rana Sanaola today. Huh? No Rana Sanaola. No Rana Sanaola or Barrier Town uh, bashing. Done. So <laughs> Lahore childhood. Tell me about a little bit because we went to the same school. We went to LAS. We were in Eighth Street together as well for yeah. a bit. What was that like, childhood? Um, I mean, uh, it was you know, it was it was what it was. It was a very happy uh protected environment um Aitsen was very different from LAS LAS kind of globalized us Aitsen kind of domesticated us ha ek pendu banate hai aur ek burger banate hai ha ek pendu banata hai aur ek burger to end mein aap chapli kebab ban jate ho um but you know it it, it was like i can't really explain it but it's a very it, we we had good lives very protected lives mm. um you know i my parents had a lot of influence on me growing up my father and my mother um and uh, yeah but i i mean i always say this to people that it i don't think anything in my life or my training in school or in university kind of prepared me for what this book is uh, about Hmm. So yeah, so you know, like in context to the book, when I think about my childhood, there's that happy and that protected side of it. But then there are there are moments like I was born in '84, and that was maybe four or five years into, you know, my father um, taking a political stand against the Al Haq hmm. and that regime, um, and so. I say protected and happy, and I say this because as happy as maybe I unaware and happy as I was in the protected environment that I was, my father was in solitary confinement and he was going to jail, and you know his life was very difficult because of his uh, political ideology yeah. or beliefs, and he was paying a very heavy price for it. Mm. And I find it amazing that it never like I knew Abbas in jail and I knew Abbas going through hard things. I never saw the finality of the situation, or you know, he. It was very like that's where that happy, protective, protective. And your mother was very like My strong mother, through that whole thing as well, na? Um, unbelievable, like um, you know, and she was very young. Um, she was about twenty-one when she had me. Oh and wow! Yeah, she, really? she was very, very young, and she was dealing with this man um, mm. who was not as young as her. he was much he was actually 17 18 years older than her mm. and uh, very determined um, to not like he would never take a step back if he decided to do something in life he would see the end of it and the end of this mean meant or his life or a regime change which mm. seemed you know yeah. impossible at that time so but you know the reason that i'm mentioning this is because when i did find myself in a very difficult situation i could could not remember a single lesson that i learned from aitson american school university or anything but i remembered that struggle of my father's um solitary confinement solitary confinement you know uh um giving up on daily freedom choice life he was a successful businessman before he decided to do this as well 
so you know people would never understand like why would somebody who's got success in life just decide that none of this has any value i'm going to go and start you know a mm. political campaign a, a regime change campaign and th- this is in the face of losing everything family livelihood but he did it and the thing is that he did it and it took you know from whenever they started in the late 70s to the early, to the late 80s whenever zia ul haq died and these guys were ca- came out of jail and came into power and formed a government um it was a very difficult time and most of the things that actually helped me survive these four and a half years mm. were lessons from that period of my father's life and of course lessons from when he started his professional career mm. because he came from nothing you know um he didn't have the same happy protected childhood as the one Actually, that really he, he was uh, the son of a very popular poet right he was but my grandfather died when my uh, father was maybe 5 or 6 ah. and being the son of a very popular poet usually meant you're broke <laughs> <laughs> So his mother was uh, worked at a hospital and it was very difficult she found it very difficult to make ends meet she was uh, english so it was even worse uh, more difficult this was the country was newly independent mm. um she was a uh, english lady living in lahore raising pakistani children uh, so very hard and she had a very difficult life and my father and his sisters had a very difficult life mm. but the own like i always saw my father faced with these impossible situations and overcome them mm and somehow and i never compare myself to him because i can't but somehow whenever i'm faced with a difficult situation i only s- see it as something that i have to overcome Come. and you know that comes from being patient regarding the trial or tribulation that you're facing and um, and persistent in terms of You need a bit of a determined on that. Yeah, but in a very. This may throw us eight sun be at there, but the variance come on success. Give a little bit of credit to eight sun for some reason. I forgot very important lesson, <laughs> <laughs> especially when we were caned. You did. <laughs> Persistent. Persistent. <laughs> did you ever get caned in eight sun? I think I had the record. Acha. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think every day for the nine years that I was there, I was <laughs> the headmasters. Who be training or anything? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by the end oh, of the like, oh, it's been 3 days <laughs> <laughs> i haven't seen you are you okay <laughs> my god so you did uh, you went to london you didn't go to america <clears throat> cuz this is post 911 right yeah so why uh, so what happened like why, why did you go to london instead of america so it's really funny the we were the generation the first generation of kids that went to college after 911 so it mm. happened in my senior year and then you know it happened in september and mm. you know we were supposed to go to college in you know next september and mm. you pl- you start applying around that time and our guidance counselor actually came uh, in and she was a, she was an american lady and she actually came and sat all the kids that were mediocre students not the top guys mm. even the top guys by the way and said that look it it's going to be very difficult for you guys to get admission into uh, the US they the atmosphere there has changed they are looking at this country very negatively right now mm. and so we were actually discouraged from applying to the US mm. uh, and told you know safe bets in university so I, th- there were quite a few people that went to the US but mm. you know it was a very strange time to be a pakistani 18 year old muslim, muslim. kid yeah. um because but and, and it's crazy right because hum we do come from privileged families and we live in certain comforts that you know whatever it is it is what it is hmm. um and we are not used to um facing any kind of racism or discrimination right hmm. and at, and by by the time you're 18 you have a pretty decent idea of what you faced or what you haven't faced for mm. an 18 year old to face racism or discrimination for the first time and not even understand where it's coming from mm. is weird mm. um and so i still remember i i was in england and you know we i, I was entering the country and they put me in that two hour you know 
back background check oh, and what are you doing here super special here? sexy screening triple yeah. s like how aata four yeah, yeah. s's aate the you know what i mean and and so it became weird it became yeah. weird for us and even in london ah huh? london everywhere man even today when you're like pakistani people uh. look at you like cuz you even went to like uh, with uh, uh with your wife when you were going to america the fbi arrested you guys arrested yeah. tha kya tha what so, happened at the so airport so i so i was actually arrested on suspicion of trying to blow up an american airlines plane <laughs> and i was asleep and basically uh, it was racial profiling so hmm. i was a lot older but i was racially profiled i was somebody just basically didn't like me and went and said they're terrorists and huh. so homeland security in the fbi raided the plane took me out it was about an 8 hour episode where i was actually kept underneath the plane while a bomb squad came to clear it mm. and the whole time i was thinking if there's actually a device on this plane and it goes off <laughs> it's on me and i'm going to die as well mm. because i'm right underneath the plane yeah yeah so not only am i going to die the blame is going to come on me and i'm completely innocent so after 6 hours of this insanity i actually was taken into a room and interrogated by the fbi and just before anything i was like I, my father is the sitting governor of Punjab. You guys have completely lost your mind. Mm. And they looked at each other like, we like I could tell they knew that they'd messed it up. <laughs> But you know, I mean, I was lucky that uh-huh. my father was the serving governor of Punjab at the time. Yeah, you you know what I mean. I cannot, for the life of me, imagine if I if he was not my father and didn't have that role, mm. and I was still in this situation. Yeah, I don't know how I'd get out of it. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? It was a really ridiculous and impossible situation. Like I think it's I'd imagine there'd be a many many hours of there would be no bomb in the end and many many hours of interrogation and then they'd let you go if your father wasn't the sitting governor. I don't know if they'd let me go if they uh, you know what happens when people are racially profiled and put uh, uh-huh. you know there's a terrorism charge put on you or suspicion of terrorism and ship you off to Guantanamo Bay. I mean how many I just heard of an innocent man being released after like 25 20 years or something from Guantanamo Bay and he was like an engineer never done anything he just had a beard and got like you know picked up so weird stuff can happen yeah it can yeah. um but like when we go back to that time when we were applying we were so unaware of it like i mm. know that like for example if you're a black person growing up in the US mm. you know you you hear about it you your parents have probably been through the civil rights movement you've got some formal education about it you know about systematic racism yeah. you understand it but like pakistanis have not faced it ever mm. in their life yeah. and only because of 911 we faced it otherwise we are very used to going to england and america and working there and pakistanis have corner shops and they have this and they you know yeah. like there's a joke yeah. like oh, part of the fabric yeah so it was strange but you know maybe some of our political uh, alliances allegiances where we lean <laughs> it is it, it's very controversial some of the stuff that we do in pakistan right mm. and then it is fair that western countries also do look at you with suspicion like it's yeah. not like 100% their fault and you're 100% innocent yeah so it's it's a mix of both but as someone who's not done anything mm. it's weird to be arrested on suspicion of uh terrorism it's also weird to be profiled in a immigration line as a college student but it's also just imagine like the, the how weird the situation would me, be for me as an individual going through these two things and then kya wo tum airplane land hua hai wo andar aaye nahi nahi land hi hua land hi hawa mein kis tarah rest kar sakte nahi nahi it hadn't taken off acha take off so we we boarded the plane huh. and they made an announcement like there's a delay for some reason and then like you know 10 minutes turned into an hour into 2 hours and then suddenly the fbi raided handcuffed me and took me down and put me in, in a car uh, out of everyone just out of you. everyone they just walked in from the back of the plane i was right at the back and uh-huh. they walked i was wearing a lakers jersey and like you know i didn't even look like osama then <laughs> so they just arrested me and they put me in the back of a police car no questions hmm. no quest nothing 3 4 hours i was underneath that plane they cleared like, the plane sir you need to keep silent not a word because i was alone in the, in the police car so i was in the back of a police car handcuffed right oh, wow. and it's the first time i realized you know those american police cars that we see on the space at the back is not that much <laughs> like it's really tight and uh, so i was there and after 3 4 hours when they cleared the plane and they realized there's no bomb on it is when two officers came in the those two cars that we were in and drove us back to maybe an fbi little 
kind of a safe house inside um, San Francisco airport. Yeah, San Francisco airport. SFO. SFO. Yeah, I was with Harris Bar. So, <laughs> and then and and the actual investigation took like five minutes because I was like, "Hello," <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And it, it's insane that Senator Kerry at the time, who was a who had previously been a presidential ca- candidate against, uh, he was uh, Barack Obama's first presidential candidate, right? And the second one was Hillary Clinton. Hmm. So Senator Kerry was actually distributing flood relief aid with my father at the time of my arrest. They were distributing aid to flood victims. Wow. While this arrest had happened. Coincidental. So if they'd even just put my name into the system, they would have known who I was. Mm. But being a brown Muslim is like you don't even get that at that. And you're that not time. even that brown. Basically, right? <laughs> wow, it's just weird of the Shahbaz. Tasir, Ali, no, they didn't go with the Ali. Tasir. They just went with because otherwise they would have put it in the system. But you know, it's weird, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, can you imagine that? Uh, like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. profiled. Sh- yeah, never happened to me. I've only got that SFS mark. The four hours, mark. the I'm four hours, and sit thing. around. Even that, man. Like, I, you know, I remember once I went up to the uh, immigration officer, mm-hmm. and I was like, you know, my that passport of mine. It, I had an official passport, so I tried to, you know. I was like, I have the blue passport, if you could just... And so he called me five minutes later. He's like, did you say you have a diplomatic passport? Mm. I was like, no, no, official. He's like, no, you said diplomatic. I was like, no, 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 the blue one. I just said I have a blue passport. He's like, if you ever lie in the United States again, I'll deport you, fraud. <laughs> it's like official as in it's a government official passport. Huh. But there's nothing like... So, you know, it's thin. Like, the it's you have to be careful... And yeah. as a young guy, it was weird. Like I never faced it. I still, by the way, like now America's mm. become like it's not like that anymore. So you don't get that. Like Less you're like from that. Pakistan. Trump people and, like Trump ne thodi racism chadai thi, lekin ab fir wapas kaam karo. I think maybe towards other people, but towards us, like Haan, we, got more, <laughs> <laughs> we got more respect. We got more respect. So, but yeah, but it, like right now, I was in America, and I didn't feel it like that. Huh. I didn't feel it like when I was younger, but in England I felt it. Like England, I feel it historically. It's happened when I was fifteen. It's happened when I was eighteen. Packy. It happened, yeah. You know what I mean. So yeah. over there, you really get the packy, and somehow they can tell. They're like, yeah, it doesn't matter how what you think you are. That's mm. a packy right there. So tell so, me, like, at, this was the point where your dad was alive. Um, how? What do you remember of his uh, assassination? What? Where were you? Um, so I was actually on the phone with him huh. and um, it was my younger brother's birthday and uh, Shariar and Abba were in Islamabad and th- they were finishing up on some work and um, so I was I, I I walked I bought Shariar a birthday present I was at home I was in my house my mother was sitting on the bed so you know I said what's up and what's going on and she was on the phone with Abba so I, I just asked for the phone because mm. the MQM had left the coalition, the PPP coalition that day. Oh. And so I, I just took the phone and I was like, oh, everybody's mm. saying your government's going, you know, and I was a PMLQ voter. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's like, oh, every day our government is going, we're going to finish our five years. Don't you worry, you know, uh-huh. you, you sit down, okay? And then I was like, when are you coming? And he's like, I'll be... I'm just going to, I've just gotten my book. Mm. I've just finished my soup. Mm. I got a book. And basically, Kosar Market was like a five minute walk from my house in Islamabad. Mm. So he said, I've just gotten a book and I'm going home. So we'd go home, change, get everything ready. Maybe in another half an hour, he would have left for Lahore. Um, and I was like, okay, I'll see you around 6.30 or something. And I just gave my mother the phone and I walked out of uh, my mother's room and out of the family lounge into my driveway. And as I walked into the driveway, my mobile rung and it was my khala. So I, you know, oh, sorry. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I didn't realize. So I picked up. Tammy. And, yeah, Tammy khala. Tammy khala. So I was like, yes, what's up? So mm. she's like, listen, I just gotten a phone call that Kosar market mein there's been a bomb blast or something. Mm. And I, now she's saying it in terms of your father's house is so close, so just make sure everything is okay. But for me, I was like, Abba was in Kosar. I just spoke to him. He was just getting a book. So it was like the main, you know, that bookstore is like the second last store on in Kosar Market on the L shape of the road. So if yeah. there's a bombing, it's got to be right there. Yeah. You know, the road is a certain way. 
and so like my heart sank and i just remember i turned back and i and i started running and i was calling my father's phone and first it said aapka matluba number band hai and then the second time it rang so i was like it's ringing it's ringing it's ringing and i got to my mother's room and she wasn't she was just she literally just shut the phone you know a few seconds before i walked in the room Oh. and i was like i just got this mujhe khala ki abhi call aayi hai are you weren't you on the phone she said i was just on the phone with abba everything is fine khala's got it wrong so i was like call him so we both frantically were trying to call and nobody twice it rang and then the third time it's the fourth time it was like aapka number band hai and then every time i called it said aapka number band hai and then you know things started like i was on the phone with his military secretary and um and actually when i managed to get through to him the first time he said i've heard and i'm going to get back to you hmm so that's when it dawned on me that something is ha- has happened in kosar market hmm and then you know the day rolled out hmm and i think maybe 15 minutes after that call with the military secretary i called him again i finally got through to him and he said we're going to bring him to lahore hmm So I was like are you mad and I'm getting a plane and I'm coming right now to Islamabad and put him in the best hospital and don't even think about bringing him to you know like I I was coming mai us angle se aa raha tha and he's like Shabazz meri baat samajhne ki koshish karo hum unki body Lahore leke aayenge hmm to you know it's ridiculous to absorb that and Yeah I always say this um I actually had to go and tell uh, my mother and my family that um what the colonel had told me and even when I was kidnapped um and I've had many things happen since I've got been kidnapped in my personal life um I've had loss and you know things like that but I've never I don't think I've ever felt such an overwhelming um you know burden in my life of I don't know like a like I wish that I didn't have to be the one that had to do that you, you, no, I, I, I don't know if you, if you can understand that Try to understand um but it was very difficult of all the people that I could have ever had to give this information to hmm. to my mother yeah um and also it was so violent uh yeah. you know what i mean and uh, he was a very good man like he was a very uh life you know had made yeah. him, uh, he was a hard man everybody who knew him knew salman tasir there's no witty bullshit. funny but he was yeah. a, he was soft highly competitive very all of these yeah. qualities but he was a very soft man yeah. you know his best like his favorite time was lying on that sofa with a book my sister in his lap the bulldog two sons wife running around mm. kids grandchildren sitting there orchestrate no no he's the uh, yeah orchestrator of uh, the opera or whatever as it's playing but this was his happiness all his ambition Man, that's an amazing thing because such successful businessmen generally don't tend to be that uh into family like they're so absorbed by their work that most of the kids are saying like uh, i used to hear yt say ke uh, abba was always there for his football championships watching yeah. you know Do, you know how does a guy like that find time at the same time have most, you ever like, read kobe bryant's story no i haven't so it's really interesting so he's obviously like he's one of the most successful athletes ever right and they talk about that mamba mentality huh. so he used to wake up at 5 in the morning and he used to start training and at the height of his uh, career he basically said that i have to work a certain amount to be the best in the world right it requires like say 10 hours a day mm. that's what i require to be the best in the world so what do i do in the remaining time because i have daughters i have a wife so how do i manage it and one of the things he was realizing was like lax driving in lax is like half your day gone mm. so that helicopter mm. the reason that he used to take the helicopter was to reach his family quickly Hmm. so that he didn't have to get stuck in LAX traffic he could make his daughter's game and train he could drop his daughter to school and train and all of this would be happening in 10 10 minutes spans whereas if he was in a car it would take 2 hours hmm. but he could do it in 15 minutes on a helicopter and my father used to manage his family time exactly like this uh-huh. so as important as everything was 
his family time was very important if he wanted to be the best at everything and he managed being whatever he was he also managed this as well as he managed that and wow. made space for it so like and and not just like he was a very involved father like i remember all my teachers were in you know like it was difficult to mess around in school <laughs> other people's fathers weren't as involved with their academics as mine was but he was probably busier than those other people's fathers as well yet yeah, involved so i'd be more scared you know mm. he's taken this time out to keep yeah. an eye on me if i mess this up yeah. you 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 know what i mean so but he set these bounds and he he also like i still remember man i didn't do well once i actually failed and i was devastated okay and i thought my father was going to kill me actually he's going to murder me because one of the things that he required from his children was academic success because that's the only way he made it in life mm. and he believed that look privilege is one thing but you need wo hota hai na hum kehte hain qualification chahiye ah. degree chahiye ah. sahi hai usme acche numbers wale acche number wale wo usme bada yakeen karta tha hmm ab main i was really scared i was like you know this is going to be tough for me Mm. and but he'd seen me studying and probably in in all my life that i've ever failed this was the one time that i felt that i should have actually done really well cuz i really put in those 6 6 hours notes writing read like i did quizzes and he actually um helped me through this the studying process mm. so i was scared because i i thought you know now he was involved in my in my preparation and i still failed so it's like a reflection on him as mm-hmm. well like my failure is associated with him so he's going to be more angry because <laughs> he's a really successful guy failure is not something that he deals with mm. but he actually put his arm around me and he said i know you tried your best mm. and that that was the end of the conversation wow and i just remember thinking fuck <laughs> <laughs> we said the bad you word you think you got him pegged down yeah. <laughs> and that you don't <laughs> and but 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 i'd faced a lot more anger on smaller things about mm. habits Mm. you know like ye aadat sahi karo ye bewakoof aadat sahi karo mm. i'd get more anger on that than i'd ever received on trying and failing and i realized you know it was his method of encouraging mm. so you know like growing up with this very busy man he still like that attention to dear i'm not the only like if you ask my younger brother if you ask my younger sister they all 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 of them will tell you he was very very involved with us mm. you know he groomed us nurtured us a lot of the things that we say sometimes a lot of our opinions a lot of our interests are directly from him mm. so shariar's godfather and thing for history and all of this mm. comes directly from my father mm. you know it's so how how did once he was gone and you have all these businesses and you've got this whole like setup that he's made and your mother was never involved in the commercial side of things right no so how did that affect uh, everybody else like you shariar sharbano amna aunty <sighs> I yeah I think as a learning curve it was it probably shouldn't have been as good as it was like I don't know how this but you know that's it's my mom mm. she mama actually uh stepped in and filled a void that I didn't even think was possible mm. and that is leadership you know uh, Sharyar and I were absolutely devastated and very young and I was abbas only child who was trained by him to work in the companies with a position of authority and yet at the time i felt overwhelmed and mm. uh, overwhelmed mm. um and my brother and is like my rock mm. but he was overwhelmed mm. we were overwhelmed together and my mother stepped in and she led us from the front mm. you know because it was her husband who was assassinated but she was at office at 9 in the morning till 6 o'clock at night oh. she set the standard for for the office mm. and um, and no Did matter how to think of shifting or leaving the country or no man I, no? you know you know i say this all the time and like you know I've heard it from YT I haven't heard it from you what what was your thought pattern on that 
Look, I don't believe in uh, you know patriot patriotism. Hmm. Uh, I I believe it's like a fool's ra- last resort, right? Hmm. Like I hate people that are like obsessed with like I, I'm Pakistani or even worse, like I'm 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 a Nawab of you know you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. It's like this miss. I I don't like and it. And it can be used to make you do what you know certain institutions would want you to do, and you know that gung ho stuff. Like even in America. But like, I'm not a proud Pakistani for any of these reasons. I'm really really a very proud pakistani because a few individuals that i've known in this country have sacrificed their life for the people of this country mm. and i would like uh, an ownership of, of that legacy and to leave the country would be leaving that ownership i it's not i'm not talking about my father necessarily right like i think asma jahangir was a phenomenal woman some of the work that she did Word. people abuse her and say ridiculous things about her but if she thought that you were innocent and you had been wronged she would be willing to die for you but get you justice now put aside your personal opinion and just think about a person that's willing to do that they are willing to die for you to get justice just justice they don't want anything from from you they want something for you and it's as simple as your rights there are not too many people that do this so my father was a unique person he had just about anything that i would want or that i even aspire to have um, dream of you know uh, but it didn't matter to him and there is something big about that like and there is like, something big in that so uh, turning back to like uh, how a uh, whitey Uh, Shariar is whitey, by the way, guys. He hates uh, that. He, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I apologize. He's no longer that. And, uh, please don't kill me, whitey. He, he has beaten me many times <laughs> in high school. <laughs> don't want that to continue. But uh, um, how did that? How who took what role? And your mom set the standard there. But like you and Shariar and Sharbana was too young at that point. She was very young. She just huh? come from college. Yeah. Hmm. So I was kidnapped six months in. So it didn't even matter, right? Oh. um and and it was must have been i i mean it was very difficult for my brother as well because imagine if we were overwhelmed together and now he's alone um but you know like i always say this uh, each one of us struggled and was tested um differently my mother lost her husband and her son my brother lost his father and his brother i lost my whole family and you know i was abducted my sister lost her father and her brother and and we also lost our lives as we knew it yeah as we used to enjoy living it like you know it became very difficult people's eyes and for example aaj bhi log mujhe kafir keh dete hain and you know it's weird like yeah. they don't know anything about me huh. but they'll be like oh his father did this he's a kafir you know no. what i mean it's weird but i live with this in this country yeah. and there is this constant danger as well keh rahe aane de uske samne se you don't mind. he's not smoking it's okay it looks good um nahi lag raha i apologize i'm smoking so, and i apologize for giving you a nice misty <laughs> you're nice. making flattering looks happen <laughs> <laughs> so but you know what i you know what i'm trying to say so uh. they you know like it, it was very difficult to live a life where i had no idea of istra ka like a, a a fear of my life being in danger to living with that feeling in the back of my head all the time yeah you know so then six months said your kidnapping is about to happen you have no idea and there's mastermind re at work here there yeah. people like waiting outside recon chal rahi hai you decide to take not the suv but the mers and it's a small car one guy misses you the other guy doesn't yeah and on he, hosan chok hosan chok and that was the pso pump over there right that's no just uh, so you know the pso pump after hosan chok when you go into mm alam you take huh. a left right uh-huh. and you enter the gully yes and then you take another left hmm. and it's like it's like a u that hmm. you do from the main road and hmm. and then you're in that last gully yeah and uh, it was empty So as I pulled it, and I have three routes. It's so funny because I was having this conversation. I think with uh, with Lisa or Doc. I can't remember. Or I can't remember, but I was having this conversation about what if. And I was like, the crazy thing is, I had three routes. 
So when I get into the what if of the situation, my mind was like, why I could have taken two other routes and this wouldn't have happened to me. Yeah, but they could have come the next day again and tried the next I was going to uh, Dubai and then I was going on a holiday. Then they were, oh, yeah. They so the what if, money. <laughs> the what, what if lives with me like in a haunting manner. But now, I, I wonder what my life would have been like had this not been part of it, you know? <sighs> this book is like 200 odd pages. Yeah. But it's four and a half years, it's like going to university or... Mm. high school or friendships or you know many things like it's it's a small period of your life yeah and i wonder what i would have been had this not happened to me mm. you know um, so that's when they came in the car and there was this basra character and the muhammad ali character who was just smiling he come for you that guy he said that when he actually put me in the car and i was offering him money and my watch and you know i was thinking it's a car jacking mm. so the first instinct was i was like there's no need to hit me guys i've got like a 100 dollars on me and a nice watch and you guys are okay you got nice sports car and you know here's a nice watch and here's some money and just let me out and that's when he you know it was this protected bubble that I live in. You know, I was mentioning before this even started that the first two weeks was just that I have to go to America, you know, I'm going to get out of here, I'm going to get out of here because, you know, my flight's in two weeks. I had to be, and then the uh, Czech Republic date missed and then the London date missed and then the Los Angeles date missed and then it was six months and God, I sometimes I used to look back and used say... used to scratch those, uh, the days on The days, onto, yeah. And, I, and I used to just think how delusional was I to think that, you know, two weeks may khatam ho jayegi and I'll be in London. Mm. Uh, three weeks may khatam ho jayegi and I'll replan my holiday. You kept thinking this even though, even after they take, took you out of Lahore? Yeah, yeah. I just used to think I'm just going to go back home. And I, th I think the uh. first time it dawned on me how fucked I was. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <I think laughs> we're, how, we're loosening up. Thank God. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, that how, uh, you know, deep in, in the hole I was, was when they actually made me send the video of the demand to my mother. So it's in the book as well that I yeah, had yeah. this panic attack. When they were like, we want $40 million and these 25 guys. Mm. The 25 guys seemed easier than the $40 million. Yeah. Because, um, and the crazy thing is, I, I probably mentioned this the last time I was here as well. I met Daniel Pearl on the flight from Dubai to Lahore. Huh. Right? Mighty Heart. Mighty Heart, yeah. right. So, um, and then... I Lahore land I have been there I and Nadir, your cousin and yeah. Gambi and all of them I was watching you but you didn't so we to Gambi's house from the season finale from the episode of Gambi's house I was going to go home and the end wow you know what I mean like just in a routine man so their demands were these like 4 billion rupees the or 40 million dollars bante hain ye kya hai us waqt pe to wo bahut tha 86 pe rupee tha you met peter in your tell us a little bit about how that happened what 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 peter kaun tha aur peter kab mila aur peter ka kya scene hai so you know like um, through this book i talk about loneliness right it's it's such a strange um, and I'm not a, I'm a very outgoing person. Uh -huh. So even if I don't know someone and I meet them through someone that I have an affiliation with, you know, I open, I'm very like open um, to meeting new people and making friends. And and this doesn't come from a place of, I don't know, sometimes people that are funny have deep rooted complexities, right? I'm just funny, <laughs> <laughs> right? And I'm just nice. <laughs> it doesn't come from... <laughs> <laughs> but you know but I am very like homely and open and I have never I, you know till this kidnapping and obviously my father's death I, I don't remember a period in my life where I sp spent it sad or I had like I was chubby I was fat I was thin I was ugly I was good looking I, uh, the whole spectrum right mm. but I was always happy I was never um worried about anything mm. and just happy and mm. I don't know what the word is I don't want to sound like stupid because I it did like childhood kehte, no? there's a word uh -huh, but it wasn't like that like uh, well, well, comfortable complacency. okay that's nice uh, comfortable, comfortable complacency, complacency. 
<laughs> right and um, and so for me to be completely taken away from everything as i knew it hmm. and be in this isolation not being able to call someone talk to a friend meet a friend a family member just this me yeah um so i just, the loneliness was haunting and i also realized that like i am very good company yeah indeed. and i would find my that part of me to talk to myself you know to find that that part of me that say maybe you love or my mm-hmm. friends love right mm-hmm. and i would talk to that guy hmm. because the other guys or the other part of me was so broken that i was like sinking in this dark hole that i thought that i you know if you go down these uh, roads i don't think you can come back which is why you know some of the things that maybe i haven't mentioned in the book as much but like um the stand up comedy part of it peter mm. you know the reason that i had peter that peter movie, by the way is a is a spider is a spider and uh, wo tom hanks ki movie nahi hai tom hanks ki movie nahi hai cast cast away right to wilson wilson, wilson. Ka, right yeah. and uh, so peter was my wilson yeah. <clears throat> and if you need a wilson when when actually when you're in a solitary state you find a wilson Hmm. right and actually peter and wilson are you speaking to yourself trying to find that part of you that you remember that you like the most actually um and so you know it was amazing because in this monotony that was now my being and life i would look at the only hole in this dark room where light would come for a few hours of the day and this web that had been created peter's web right mm. because he's a spider and machhar aate the ab we don't live with mosquitoes right yeah <clears throat> in terms of we live in houses and if there's a mosquito problem flit marte hain light lag thousand ways to get rid of mosquitoes you're not going to sleep in a room with 5000 mosquitoes <laughs> not, right yeah. you're not yeah and uh, or even if, by the way if you're poor you'll get a machhar dani Machardani is a is like actually a protective bed. It's like a hundred rupees, right? Mm. So anyone can afford it. And I'm not saying it like you know, ustra. But I'm literally telling you, there's solutions for every problem inside cities and villages and everywhere in societies. There's solutions for problems. Mm. But here, in jail or in in captivity. the Uzbek yeah. captivity, that no one's giving you a fan because you're hot. I mean, it's forty-five degrees outside, and no one's giving you a machhar dani because you're being swarmed in the evening by a billion mosquitoes. Yeah. So you know, a lot of people are like, "Apko PTSD hai," and I'm like, "Nahi, mujhe wo tinnitus hai, mm. the air ringing, right?" And I think that's worse than PTSD because it's constant. Ah. And the and the only effect like that I actually have from my kidnapping was in the beginning when I would hear the sound of a plane, it would startle me, mm. right? And and the reason that I don't have PTSD. is is how i worked is because i actually work and by myself by the way with no help that if i was in a situation where for example at 4 in the morning a plane flies over my house i live in cavalry grounds right so right next to the airport so if a plane flies over my training had become over 4 and a half years that i have to run outside and run for cover because it's a jet strike right that's the only reason a plane used to fly over me for 4 and a half years so when i hear this i would get up but i am home yeah so i'm startled mm. i'm extremely uncomfortable mm. i've had a bad fall in the morning <laughs> <laughs> but i would visual like i would fix my like i'm State. you're not there you're home you're in bed relax mm. right and the ability to do that is uh, overcoming the ptsd You didn't Part. have to go to a shrink or anything to get rid of that PTSD thing. No, but I, I've, I've had to go to a shrink, man. <laughs> you had to. <laughs> Was it helpful? My mother said, "My mother, like, you want a relationship with me, boy? You're going to a shrink." <laughs> <laughs> Joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, funnily, that's what my wife said when we were fighting. <laughs> I saw a shrink, <laughs> my, my, and my I found mom. it only makes things worse I, in I, my in my case. Yeah, right. Pakistani yeah. shrink. Because yeah, I'm just like I'm. I'm by the way, this, I don't know where's the camera. But I, this, this is no dig at the profession. You guys are fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. You're doing a great job at healing relationships and people. Yeah, um, and reading psychology and you know the studies that people do on the human mind and figure things has helped me. 
is just that in my case this particular experience was not helping because you know the doctor would say okay go face your issue and i'd be like no no sometimes you have to it's not face the issue <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you have to bury the issue and forget about it you know don't yeah. engage the issue all the time but you know something uh, like jokes and everything aside yeah therapy is really important hmm. okay and my advice to you is if you feel uncomfortable doing therapy keep a diary right hmm. every day but do either right or do therapy and don't not do either of them because you don't like um, the, it's clinic i wasn't like this and i know you like you know me from before i was kidnapped so you might mm. actually find some of these things that i say funny knowing that shabaz right mm-hmm. but actually meditation <clears throat> um and prayer okay and this this is not something that like for example you could be a buddhist and mm. i could be a muslim mm. and i could be doing my rounds around the kaaba and you could be in your place but that's that relaxation that your mind gets through sp- prayer and sp- being connected with your spiritual self and this is across religions and across cultures mm. and it's proven it it actually helps mm. meditation also helps certain things do help you and i really believe like in the world that we are living in right now you need these a few of these basic things so i i laugh about it and stuff because i actually never been to therapy for what happened to me mm. right <laughs> so isn't that crazy <laughs> so every time i go to a therapist they're like so you healed yourself there seems like a perfect life i know ptsd now let's talk about today <laughs> <laughs> why did you do this <laughs> like, <laughs> i don't know man <laughs> but you but i like if you can afford it huh. you should go for therapy mm. and you should also act like when i i say these things like exercise mm. or yoga or prayer these are really important do them as much mm. as you can and if you can't like for example you you're like okay i can do the exercise part i am not going to therapy okay it's not for me pakistani men have a thing like pata nahi unki mardangi kam ho gayi hai <laughs> so right Yeah. keep a diary and just write your thoughts but you would be surprised when you actually write your angry thought down and reread it how stupid you are mm right? yeah. yeah yeah and if you have a little bit of self reflection uh, self reflection you know yeah. that, then you can kind of heal mm-hmm. things yourself maybe there's a therapist inside your head then by that you, time, know, you know my father used to say think 10 times before you speak and in your case make it 12 so <laughs> <laughs> so you know what i mean so it You you should never say something. Your first instinct is something you should remember, hold on to, give it like twelve thoughts, and then you mm. know say is this is the right thing from? to say in in this situation. And you'll realize it'll help you cross platform in all relationships and even in work and your personal life. And mm. by the way, people face problems that have nothing to do with other people. Mm. It's the things that you create in your own mind. Mm. and i really feel like these small things like exercise meditation um keeping a diary prayer th- in your case prayer um mm. it just helps the balance mm. okay so i know i made Is fun of the... laughed about it in the beginning but yeah, i'm yeah, me honestly too, me too. yeah i'm honestly telling you something that there are things that are good for you yeah and and to be honest i also like i like to take a day on shrinks but like yeah. um uh, they helped in my case as well So is this like all these new things that you added into your personality is this the Shabaz Tasir you talk about in the book because you say that there was a Shabby T before this and then Shabaz Tasir was born So who is Shabby T and then there's of course Ahmed which is the guy that they've made Yeah you So into. you know even so th- that's a um, it's crazy right I always tell people that like if I had 9 lives I'm probably on my 15th and I've definitely god wo kya kehte hain split personality nahi hoti hmm. so i don't have a split personality right now but i've had five six personalities in my life that uh-huh. i'm like what the hell uh-huh. um so shabby t that you read about in the book is your friend is the guy who grew up with you went to aitson with you went to ls with you hmm. you know who he is hmm. um and he he is that guy who had that happy protected childhood and you know went to school and had like good things about him and bad things but lived a normal life hmm. nothing spectacular in his life um and what you see today is someone who's been molded out of you know 38 years of his of experiences and probably uh, from the age of 26 you know 
from from zero to twenty six the same guy, mm. but from twenty six to you know thirty eight, mm. like five six different guys. Before I can even explain who Shabazz Tasir is, I have to go to Ahmed, right? Mm. So before Ahmed, there was a guy called G Bai, G Bai. Right? Huh. So G Bai was G Bai. Huh. So when they knock on the door at odd hours, mm. to and I and I have to reply, because I'm a prisoner, mm. right? So three o'clock in the morning, G Bai. They say it or you say it. I say G Bai. Huh. I have to reply to the knock. Or... If I don't reply yeah. to the knock, they'll open the door. They'll come in. They'll think something. You know huh. what's going on over here. Huh. So. Knock, G bhai. What the fuck is G bhai? <laughs> they're Uzbeks, so they're huh. like G bhai, G bhai. You know, they're mocking oh, me. They're mocking you. They're mocking uh. me, G bhai. So G bhai was, you know, clean the red bucket. Yeah. So shabby T was like, this is beneath me. I'm not going to do it. So G bhai is beaten with daras, mm. broken till he realizes. Till one of the guards is like, clean the bucket. Because mm. your entitlement and privilege that you think that you shouldn't be cleaning shit is about a thousand kilometers the other way, and mm. this guy will beat you black and blue and mm. clean that uh, red bucket with your tongue. Okay? Oh God! Yeah, yeah, and with your head he'll clean it. Mm-hmm. It's better to leave the entitlement and start cleaning, and the quicker the better. Mm. Right? And th- one guy is saying this while the other is beating me. Mm. So then I clean the bucket. Mm. Right? So There's the G- bucket with the goat fat that you threw no, the no, first the, time. No, no, the bucket that's my pot, right? Pot, like it's yeah. my commode, right? Sure. That's what I Pre-season use. Yeah, stuff, yeah. It's, it's, uh, every ten days I have to clean it. I just can't explain it to you, but it's like I don't want to, right? Mm-hmm. And I, and I suddenly I felt like you know I'm Shabazz Tasir, and how dare these people ask me to clean it? And so I will not clean it. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you know what I mean? Huh. Like thousand kilometers away, bro. That attitude is a thousand. You will clean that bucket, okay? It's a bit de like humanizing as well, like yeah. you know, a like, bit, a bit. Yeah, that is the definition of dehumanizing, right? It is, but in terms of yeah, it's it it's not just the bucket, right? It's every aspect of your life, hmm. you know. And you you're basically a captive. You don't have entitlement. You don't have rights. You don't have an attitude. You don't don't nobody cares who your father is or who the hell you think you are. Hmm. You are the lowest form of. A human being right now, because the lowest forms are two kinds of people: a slave, and kafir. A, no, a, a captive. A captive. Someone yeah. that you have, with your strength, mm. made into your, you know, you're holding him with strength. Yeah. And a slave. They they, they fundamentally have the same rights. They yeah. have none. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's very difficult to be. You know, even if you go into this was G- merely right. This, this is, is merely Mirancha. So, like I was telling you about G Bai, hmm. then G Bai became into Ahmed, who was the you know captive there. Started learning, started embracing Islam, learning about it, talking back to them, taking them on a little bit. You trying to use that intellect and that education that I had from this life and. One yeah. up them in an intellectual sense because they gave you the Quran and you armed yourself with all I, the verses. I, you know what I mean. But even he was, you know. Then the war happened, and we fall into shawal, and now I'm living with them without mm. chains and you know things like that. So now there's a guy called Kareem who's kind of has to blend in with them and pretend to be them, even though he's a captive. So other Uzbeks don't know, and he can't be killed in a drone strike, and is mm. working in coordination with his kidnapper who he hates. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh and God. he's following him out now. I like I say, hum Mir Ali se Waziristan gaye, uh, Mir Ali se shawal gaye. Everyone is like, why do you say hum? It's like your kidnappers and you, hmm. and I'm like, but we merged because, like, my chains. I remember when my chains came off. It was so that I could run to catch up. Hmm. That's why they took my chains off. Because hmm. when the jets come or when the tanks come, we have to run here. If hmm. you're in chains, you won't be able to keep up. Don't think hmm. about going there. Don't think about going to the tank. Your army, they'll kill you. Hmm. So you follow us. So that's why I say we, because hmm. we ran together. They planned the escape, and I followed. Hmm. So we, right? And this is way after you considered suicide. Yeah. And then there was Yusuf Britannia, right? Who huh. was born in in the jail as as you know a fighter from England, now a kedi, hmm. trying to escape. Hmm. And then there's me, the guy you see today, who's molded out of all of these experiences of basically these four and a half years. 
you know wow. everything else was protected but whatever you see today if there's humbleness or if there's routine or if there's prayer or if there's whatever which have whatever side to my personality hmm. um, as i say growing up or <laughs> i huh. don't know what but that that is these four and a half years right because th- yeah. this this is the only trial that i've you know faced in my life yeah. many afterwards but to this point this is why i say happy protected childhood till 26 <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean and then this and it, yeah and we heard all you. sorts of stories i remember my mariam uh, goreshi ke sath baitha hua tha at a restaurant and um i think it, it had been a while since uh, the torture pictures had been put on twitter and uh, they're I, in the book yeah and somebody told me I yeah put a few the, i put a few yeah yeah they're yeah they're i'd put them on the screen people can if you you know If your mom's gonna watch it, I'll, I'll keep the pictures. My mom out. actually had to see every single. These pictures are taken from videos that she had videos, to see. She had to see, and and each video was like घंटों की, right? घंटा घंटा type video होती थी. मेरे मुझे torture करते थे. Takes भी लेते थे मैंने सुना. आपने जिस तरह किताब में बताया. नहीं वो फर्क वो थी जब मैंने dictate कुछ करना होता था. So वो retake. But जब वो मारते थे उसमें उसमें कोई take. वो तो take हैं जाइए. वो तो हाँ. But वो मामा को करते थे कि सपोज एक घंटे की वीडियो है देर लाइक ट्वेंटी थर्ड मिनट के फोर्टी सिक्स सेकेंड में क्या हुआ था आई वॉन्ट टू वो उनको सात ऐसे सवाल देते थे कि तुमने जीरो से सिक्सटी तक देखी है ना मामा का टेस्ट होता था कि ये ना हो कि तुमने फास्ट फॉरवर्ड किया या क्या मैंने देखनी नहीं है द वीडियो इज फॉर यू वॉच इट गॉड सो यू नो फॉर माई मदर मैन टू सी योर सन टॉन पार्ट and there were 40 50 of these videos you know to yeah. see your child to so 40 I, 50 I, of them ma wow. yeah yeah i I've, i've only put i think koi lashing burial or uh, some you know three four pictures cut over when they carve my back wow. but you know yeah. they lashed me for seven days non stop mm. they uh, sewed my mouth shut they took all my nails out they took chunks of flesh from my back and this mm. is not with the carving that they would do just the plas se गोश्त पकड़ के छुरी के साथ उन्होंने काटा मेरी कमर से इतना इतना गोश्त तूने तो देखा हुआ है तूने मेरी कमर देखी हुई है तो मेरी कमर जो है सारी इज इट्स लाइक यू नो लाइक किसी जानवर ने वो इस तरह करके और मतलब चुबाया हुआ लाइक वो उस तरह है बट फॉर मी द वर्स्ट पार्ट अबाउट इट वॉज दैट माई मदर हैड टू वॉच दिस शेट so i still remember there was a video where i screamed and i said mama don't watch this mama don't watch this mm. um and mara unhone mujhe jab maine ye maine kaha aur magar usko kehti thi don't worry about what your son is screaming tell mm. me about minute x minute y and tell me the detail in that minute so that i know you watched the whole video man uh so these are the uzbeki taliban and not the other ones that we know the al qaeda's and the ttps and the ones that we're familiar with they're like a for they like a fringe group or what is this so uh, they so how it works is there is an umbrella right hmm. and the umbrella is the afghan taliban hmm. khilafat unki hai hmm. and all of these little splinter cells like al qaeda lashkar e jang we uzbekistan islami harakat pakistani taliban these are all the little little startups that startup startups wow. that yeah. have pledged allegiance Pitching. to apple <laughs> what what is their pitch the pitch I is was, uh, i got salman tasir san i got the pitch one one guy's pitch is i got salman tasir san one guy's pitch is i got the twin towers one guy's pitch is i got the ghq in lahore wow. one guy's pitch is i kill hazaras mm. one guy's pitch is i kill shias you know indiscriminately and they're pitching for funds no they're pitching for um protect literally umbrella protection so uh-huh. if you are under the protection of the afghan taliban mm-hmm. say pre 911 so you're in the Emir- the emirat of afghanistan and so so say before the americans came in mm-hmm. the afghan taliban set up mullah umar is the head right and mohammad tahir farooq even though the imu is not as big of a group as say al qaeda which is a global organization right mm. a global organization like a global terror organization yeah. it's not okay. like you know facebook or something um but you know it's it's got a much bigger role but the imu ka jo mohammad tahir farooq tha he was the amirul mahajirin you know uh-huh. so 
if Mullah Omar was the Amir al Mu'minin, the Amir of all the Muslims, he was the Amir al Mahajirin, the Amir of all hmm. the uh, ref, like um, immigrant type immigrants. Na, Mahajirin, yeah. yeah. And his military commander also was the head of the foreign fighters. So, for example, in hierarchy, now when you come down, huh. since Osama bin Laden was not Amir al Mu'minin or huh. the head of the military, huh. and he was a foreigner. He came under Muhammad Tahir Farooq's war general because oh. you you understand. Uh -huh. So the Uzbeks were actually very powerful in the Afghan Taliban Emirate, like the the Emirat itself mm. at the before the US, mm -hmm. right? Mm. They taught them how to use video cameras. Like when when they uh, destroyed those Buddhists that the Japanese offered to pay money for, mm. the 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 no one is allowed to videotape anything in Afghanistan. Because video is haram, right? Oh. But the Uzbeks are allowed to videotape. So the only video footage that exists of those uh, um, uh, Buddhists being destroyed yeah. has been made by the IMU, oh. Jindullah Islamic Studios, that made my torture videos. Studios, wow! You know, it was called <laughs> Jindullah Islamic Studios. They call them studios. That, that's that's what the 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 department really? that it's creates. It's a production. It's a proper production, man. All of their videos, they've got propaganda videos, they've got po political videos, they've got kids' education videos, they've got Shabazz Tazil's torture videos, <laughs> they've got military murdering, like killing military videos, and all comes under Jindullah Islam. And it's like really funny because sometimes I'm like driving, I'm like, you know, driving the car fast, my brother, I'm like, Jindullah, Jindullah. Ta. And he's like, what are you doing? What are you singing? And I'm like, da 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 da. It's just like that. Cause the melody like, is there. Because the, they were always. The, the Nashidas would be on 24 7, right? <laughs> so sometimes I like freak my workers out of that. I'm like, Daulatul Islam. <laughs> They're like, what the hell did you just say? And I'm like, Daulatul Lundor. <laughs> <laughs> my God, yeah. So what, what's the role that ISI is playing though, this whole time while you're in captivity? Are they helping? Are they doing investigation? Yeah, What's there that? was a phenomenal man called General Aftab and Colonel Kani. Okay, mm -hmm. and those two men, if you ever speak to my mother, they will tell you, she will tell you that Colonel Kani and, uh, sorry, uh, Colonel Kani and General Aftab were the two men and Allah ne unko kisi tarah, my mere ummi bought religious and say, mm -hmm. you know, she really believes that her cheese Allah ki taraf, you know, and Mary Kahani may be itni a jeep cheese, and that or Zada Matlab full uh, Yakin Matlab believes in this, mm. you know, like it's not luck or mm. it's all destiny, destiny written by Allah mm. ki essay on Atha. So, mm. General Aftab Jote, wo mama ki teen saal jo hai madad kar rahe the. Har mm investigation, her cheese, her video ki analyzing me and Colonel Kiani bhi, matlab ye do point men hmm. And then General Aftab was shifted to Balochistan. And my mother said that was the day that I cried. And I told him that General Saab, aap ja, ja rahe hai na, I feel like Shabazz ki hope aur usko recover karne ki umeed, thodi, I, it's taken a dent for me. Hmm. You know? And he told her, he's like, BB, I'm Always, I am with you and your son is at home. Like he was really like, my mother says, it was such an impossible situation because I couldn't let the rest of the family know how impossible the situation is. I had to give this element of calmness and I was completely lost. And wow. my calmness would come from Colonel Kiani and General Aftab who would just say that we will find this boy. Hmm. So, when you say that ISI was involved, I don't know, but these two people, they didn't leave my mother's hand. And then they had a posting of General Kiani. Hmm. Imagine, in Balochistan. Oh, man. Mama Mayus, hmm. one and a half years later, she gets a call from me from Kuchlak. Of all the places <laughs> on earth, I was in Balochistan. So, she picked up the phone to General Aftab hmm. and she said, he's in Quetta, he's in Kuchlak, like hmm. wherever that, the hell that is. Hmm. He said, it's 20 minutes from Quetta, I'm going to get him right now. So, he wow. sent the squad to pick me up. Huh. And as soon as I basically, wo I on a raid, kiya, they, I, like, I explained, I was like, you're here for me, you're here for me. They put me in the car, they claimed they rescued me. Hmm. The first person to speak to me, was General Aftab and he hmm. said, Shabazz, I have to ask you this question. Wo clearance nahi hoti ki we've got the right guy. Hmm. What kind of a wood are you made out of? And I was like, I'm not made out of wood, I'm made out of steel. And he started laughing and he's <laughs> like, you have to tell me, you have to answer the question. So I was like, I'm not made from a wood that burns, burns easily. easily. 
and he's like we got the boy <laughs> <laughs> so it's you know like i just tell you that it's insane that mm. the man that my mother was so dependent on was transferred to balochistan and one and a half years later in a hopeless situation i arrived in balochistan and he was right there to rescue me wow. like just think you know like serendipitous yeah and he It got you believe out. in uh, destiny it was 40 minutes <laughs> okay it was 40 minutes but yeah. from the time that i called my mother to the point that they picked me up it was 40 minutes and i don't think you can plan an operation that quickly that mm. general aftab executed or had executed this plan mm. of my recovery and he did it in 40 minutes so it was the longest 40 minutes of my entire life mm. like you know I was standing there with like a hundred Taliban who are going in and out of Afghanistan and thing, dressed mm. as a Taliban, mm. waiting <laughs> to be picked up. <laughs> and they didn't recognize you at first, right? They didn't know who I was. No, when the uh, when the military came, they didn't recognize. I was standing right in the front, and I was like about to like say hello, bang, you know, one guy like literally, मुझे वो गन का वो बट नहीं होता वो पेट में करके नीचे किया है मुझे. But I was right in the front of the shop. Hmm. And I was like, "They're here, <laughs> not for you." <laughs> and then the worst part is, so th- when they raided, hmm. right, the the military just went into the Salim Hotel, okay, and I just turned around. I didn't know if they're here for me now because you know I had faced so much shit in my life up to this point that hmm. I was like, "Man, I'm just in another bad." They probably come for Osama bin Laden, or me. I think passed away. Then me gone. Ah, it's gone. I just remember I looked back in Salim Hotel and they were thrashing the guy. Kid, where is he? Pra! I was like, someone's gonna go click. <laughs> and I think because I'd actually seen if, and it's in the book. Just before, like before the Taliban took us, I was in a room with some women, hmm. and one of the women decided to detonate herself. Oh. And that's when I took my burqa off, and I was hmm. like, whoa, huh. no. Huh. Okay, there's a man here. Don't kill yourself. Okay, <laughs> like it was a crazy situation. I told my guard as well, but the, you know, like, so the guard was, like, and so the lady literally just walked out of the room and blew herself up. Oh, what? So, yeah, yeah, it's in the book. You, you, it's so right. I'm twenty-four. Chapter just, number twenty-four. Yeah, yeah, you're just gonna get yeah. there. Yeah. So she just literally walked out of the room and blew herself up. Okay, and and that was the second suicide. That was the first of two suicide bombings that I saw in about twenty-five minutes. You know wow. what I mean. So the first lady goes out the back door and blows herself up, and I run out of the, like as soon as I just looked at my guard. I was like, "We're obviously everyone's dying now, right? Huh. It's over. Goodbye." Huh. And as I as I left that room, I came that this you'll you get there the field that I eventually ran across. But when I came there, there were Taliban approaching the side of the village, so they opened fire at me, and the wall that I fell under just from the corner of my eye, I saw Uzbek run. He was running across like. in a semi circle from the back of these taliban so if the taliban are here shooting at me like this he's running around them like this and he comes from the back and he blows himself up holy okay shit. and he takes out the taliban battalion and Whoa. that's when mohammed ali and sohail actually came caught and like i'm just like like there's it's war there there's a yeah. war going on the taliban are killing the uzbeks are coming down from the mountains and they're killing everyone in these three villages they're not leave it's indiscriminate killing they're not looking for a woman a child a man they're not dis- 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 like distinguishing between any of you it's just murder Whoa. and in this bombing is when i escaped and it was literally and i don't know i don't have a watch or period chalo aadhe ghante ke andar two suicide bombings right and then I, now then i spent 6 months in this afghan jail mm. and i'm in the salim hotel and the one thing that like you learn from living with these guys is dying is not a problem mm. you know dying is easy that's what everyone there is for because the promise is the end game the reward is not in this world it's in the other so they all actually here to die uh. to claim that reward so no, they it's not just that they trigger happy mm. they all kinds of happy hmm. you know the situation can get out of hand you can't you like for example if there's a robbery in a grocery store in new york right hmm. you know a weapon is involved hmm. you're not actually going to get there and find a suicide bomber with a two ton bomb on him already you, you know just, what just in case just in case but th- here this is the situation so even when they like attacked the karachi airport they had four boys dressed in vests so that when squads come 
ब्रेक थ्रू बैरियर्स जहाँ फाइटिंग हो रही है ये एक लड़का भाग के डूब जाओ कोई अंदर नहीं आता हाँ. कोई उस रास्ते से नहीं कहीं और से अगर बेटा टूम ब्लो यू नो टू सुड बॉम्बर्स कैन कॉज मोर डैमेज दिन सिक्स एफ सिक्सटीन वट इन टर्म्स ऑफ द टेर यू नो मून मार्केट लाहौर की जो बॉम्बिंग हुई है राइट इज वर्स देन यू नो एन इंडियन मिलिट्री स्ट्राइक ऑन द बॉर्डर्स ऑफ पाकिस्तान Hmm. You know the hmm. skirmishes that happened between India and Pakistan. It's like yeah. a proper military skirmish yeah. between two sides, and you'll hear of two guys died on hmm. this side and one guy died there. But a single explosion in Moon Ma- Market, it's like thirty-five women, forty-six kids, twenty men, one yeah. guy, yeah, with a crater, yeah. So when the when they actually when I look back and they're like smacking these guys, I was like. It's like a series of unfortunate events. My events, my life. <laughs> wow, this is so, is so strange in in the book that uh, you were thinking of committing suicide, and the thing that saved you from it's ironic uh, from committing it was the Quran. You yeah. know, and that and that they're convincing people with to, the Quran to, to commit die. suicide yeah. with the bombs. So uh, I actually had this argument with the boys that act, attacked the Karachi airport. Right, mm-hmm. so they were. We were all in the same compound, and they were being trained while I was there. And this was right just before Zarbe Azab started. So actually, mm-hmm. the Karachi airport is the reason why Zarbe Azab started. Oh, okay, ah. right. The Karachi airport attack, and then the military launched the operation. The APSC thing. If right. that happened later, that happened mm-hmm. in December. This mm-hmm. happened in I want to say June or May or June or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, but. I I actually remember because my kidnapper was a mufti, so he had an incredible command over. I don't know if you've ever met someone who has a very good uh, way of speaking to people. Hmm. You see it in politicians. Hmm. There are few base sorry. There are few basic trainings that people have. One is they they speak like this. This is this gives you authority. Oh okay. So you know when when you're speaking like you know what I mean. I got gotcha. you. You know, you're like, listen. You know, I I believe there's a certain importance in human liberty and you know freedom of speech. And you know, like, oh, what a intelligent, well-spoken body language has a lot to do with it. Mm. So, my kidnapper used to be, like, you know, he he would hold the Quran. This is Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali. He would have a little Quran in his hand, mm. and his hand would be exactly like how. If you ever see Barack Obama speak, he's an excellent public speaker, mm. right? And you'll always see him. He when he emphasizes on a point, he uses his hand. to mm. emphasize right he's like i believe that our freedoms are more important than what donald trump is trying to sell you you know mm. you want you, yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so muhammad ali and I, and i noted i found it very strange so to become a mufti you have to read thousands of books or a thousand books or something like that right yeah. and if you have the ability to read a thousand books and it could be you know murder a uh, mm. th- billion books on how to murder someone or you will become an expert on murdering someone Mm. by the time you've read a thousand books on it right so in the same way and if you can read a thousand books and process them and learn them and by heart like for example you 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 become a hafiz quran yeah right you you have a tremendous grasp on mani- on this text and the ability to manipulate it mm. and i would see him holding the quran and speaking to these boys and with his eyes you know and he'd be like allah subhana taala ka hukm hai apni jaan be Are you think you know pathos emotional and and okay. he's like hama and he, you know he'd hold the quran and he'd go in a crunch position he'd hold it here and he'd weep and he'd weep and he'd weep you know over the over the over the orphans and over the widows and how many they've indiscriminately they kill us and you know hmm. and these boys are sitting there and they're crying and you're talk you know he'd be like we have falasti you know they talk about palestine and mm. they talk about the zulm in palestine but what about here what have they done to us here they've bombed us and they've killed children you know they, some kid must have been killed in a drone strike 2 days ago here in a war zone mm. the casualties yeah, yeah. are immense casualties and they holding his pictures and they showing it to the kid they throwing it at the kids mm. you know and they saying ke oh, how will you stand on the day of judgment and answer for this you'll answer for this child what did you do when this child's life was taken mm. and those 19 boys and now the thing is he's not inducting them they're inducted right he's riling them up mm. this is a daily thing he mm. comes in every day and starts on something new mm. and they're like you know they're training 
दे गो दे फायर रॉकेट लॉन्चर्स जहादी बना रहे जहादी हैं दे फाइटर्स यार दे आर ऑलरेडी फाइटर्स दे जस्ट गोइंग ऑन दिस मिशन नाउ दे गोइंग ऑन दिस सुसाइड मिशन राइट सो it's taken it's going to take them four months to plan this mission in those four months muhammad ali is pep talking them yeah and he's giving them examples from the quran right mm. and i just told them when he was done with his pep talk i was like apni jaan lena islam mein haram hai aur jahannami ho tum mm. tum kisi beva aur yatim ka badla nahi le sakte agar mm. tumne apni jaan li hai kyunki mm. tum jahannami ho Hmm. और जो बेवा और बच्चा और शहीद हुआ है वो जन्नती है वो शहीद है hmm. चाहे वो टेर उसामा का बेटा है या मेरा बेटा है अगर hmm. किसी बच्चे को आपने मार दिया है या hmm. एक बेगुनाह औरत को आपने मार वो तो शहीद हो गए hmm. मगर आप जो फट रहे हो ये अल्लाह के हुक्म के खिलाफ है पढ़ो तो जरा कुरान में क्या लिखा है जान लेने का hmm. के बारे अपनी जान लेने का ये सबसे बड़ा इम्तहान है कि तुम्हें दर्द अगर आया है ना तो तुम इसको अल्लाह का इम्तहान कबूल करो जब तक तो तुम्हारी आखिरी सांस हम नहीं लेते सही है कि तुम अपनी सांस नहीं बंद कर सकते ये सिर्फ अल्लाह कर सकता है ये तो इंसान के हाथ में ये ताकत नहीं है ना दी गई है और हराम और जहनम वादा की है उस आदमी को जिसने अपनी जान ली अच्छा अब फिर आप आ जाओ मुश्किल पे यू स्पोक आप मैं तो बोलता था कि बेवकूफ झूठ बोल रहा है तुमसे जहनम में भेज रहे तुम्हें अच्छा देर इन चाची आप गुस्सा तो होते थे लड़ाई होते पर अब तो बहुत ले अब तो तीन साल हो गए थे ना मेरे में भी तो तो वो वो क्या ही करना था उन्होंने एग्जांपल थी गुमराह है बकवास कर रहा है इस्लाम को वो कहते थे ये मैनिपुलेट कर रहे अगर मैं कहता था मैं तो कुरान से तुम्हें अल्लाह का लफ्ज पढ़ के बता रहा हूँ तुम तो फिर भी पता नहीं किस आदमी की बीस साल पुराने मर्द की मुझे पेश कर रहे हो कोई दलील मैं तो तुम्हें कुरान में लिखा हुआ है और अल्लाह कुरान में कहता है कोई आदमी इस किताब के खिलाफ बात करे वो कौन है उसका छोड़ दो उसकी बात और सबसे जरूरी चीज जो लोगों को समझ में नहीं आती ना कुरान की तुम उसको पढ़ो ना इट्स सेल्फ लाइक इट्स इट्स सेल्फ वो उसमें सब कुछ लिखा है तुम्हारी समझ के लिए वो एक वाहिद किताब है कि एक दो साल का बच्चा हिफ्स कर सकता है और एक साठ साल का बाबा जिसको अरबी नहीं आती ना और किसी किस्म की फॉर्मल एजुकेशन नहीं है उसको बिल्कुल सौ समझ सकता क्या बात की या यूनिक किताब है और उसके उसका मेरेकल ये है उस लिखा हुआ अल्लाह ने इसकी हिफाजत मैं आखिर वक्त तक खुद करूंगा और तू कौन है फिर समझ में आएगी ना हाँ। तू कौन है हाँ। तेरे बाबे कौन तो है कौन है कोई भी कोई जब मैंने कह हाँ। दिया कि मैं इसकी हिफाजत करूंगा तो उसका लफ्स नहीं बदल सकता सही है एक बात तो ये होगी और दूसरी बात ये किताब एक मेरेकल है सूरह बकरा आप पढ़ो इट्स नॉट कि वो पहली सूरह नाजिल हुई थी बट कुरान क्रोनोलॉजिकली कंपाइल हुआ हुआ बट सूरह बकरा के अंदर एक बड़ी खूबसूरत चीज़ लिखी हुई है बिल्कुल पहले कुछ जो आपके वर्सेज हैं आयत हैं उसके अंदर लिखा हुआ है कि इस्लाम में मुकम्मल तौर में दाखिल हो जाओ इसका क्या मतलब है इसका मतलब है कि आपके वाल साहब ने या आपके दादा ने या आपके पर दादा ने जो आपको तालीम दी है मजहबी उसको छोड़ दो सही है दुनिया में सबसे मुश्किल चीज जो होती है ना वो अपने बाप की सिखाई हुई चीज को गलत कहना होता है हाँ जो जिस दीन पे आप के माँ बाप ने आपको बड़ा किया है ना उनको कहना कि आप गलत हैं ये सबसे मुश्किल चीज है और जो उस वक्त के मुसलमान थे वो अपने माँ बाप को कह रहे थे कि ला अला मोहम्मद रसूल अल्लाह ये बुध परस्तों को कह रहे थे वो आप सोचो आपके बाप ने आपको बड़ा किया है जो भी आप हो आप कितना प्यार करते हो अपने बाप से हाँ। और आपका बाप आपसे क्यों अमूमन इंसान जो ज्यादातर मुस्लिम होते हैं होते इसलिए क्योंकि बाप ने कहा होता है मुस्लिम है मतलब मगर ये आ, मगर कुरैश के वक्त पे दलील जब जब बाप मुस्लिम नहीं था बाप बुध पर उस जमाने की उस जमाने में और आपका आपने कलमा पकड़ा हुआ था टू अ पॉइंट के पहली पहले शहीद जो है ना इस्लाम में वो एक बूढ़ी औरत थी जिसके पेट के ऊपर गर्म पत्थर बांध के उसको मार दिया मक्का की डेजर्ट में क्यों उसने कलमा नहीं छोड़ा पहली शहीद थी वो वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट सही है और जो उसके ऊपर जुल्म हुआ था उस जुल्म को देख के और लोग मुसलमान बन गए कि इस औरत के साथ ये जुल्म हुआ सही है उसने अल्लाह का लफ्स नहीं छोड़ा और अपने बाप की सिखाई हुई दीन को छोड़ दिया उसके लिए उसको मौत दी गई वो ज, वो जन्नति है क्या बात की अगर जाके वो उस पर फिदाई हमला करते ना कुरैश पे जो कर सकते थे नहीं हाँ। मतलब वो क्यों नहीं हो सकता हर जमाने में सुसाइड 
अटैम्प्ट्स हैं बट हमारे दीन में इसका सख्त मना है क्यों उम्मीद होप हाँ ये आप कभी गिव अप नहीं कर सकते जुल्म की फेस में ना आप होप नहीं गिव अप कर सकते क्योंकि ये अल्लाह की मेरेकल है मूसा अल इस्लाम खड़ा हुआ फिर की फौज उसके पीछे थी और अल्लाह ने सिर्फ उसको कहा कि सिर्फ ये सोटी फेंको सिर्फ फेंको एंड गॉड स्प्लिट द सीज फॉर बनी इसराइल टू स्केप फ्रॉम फिर दैट्स इज मेर कैन यू इमेजिन बनी इसराइल दे वेसिंग अ सी गया and it was parted yeah. for them Masses, to escape and yeah. it was closed on on firon and he was killed hmm. unus al islam was taken by jona hmm. jona uh, the prophet jona unus al islam he was consumed by the whale hmm. okay and he read a uh, ek ayat hai quran mein la ilaha illa ant subhana inni kuntu min az zalimin unhone ye padhi i think uh, 100 bar padhi wo kehte hain और अल्लाह ने कहा अगर आपने ये जिक्र ना किया होता ना ये आयत ना पढ़ी होती ये माफ़ी ऐसे ना मांगी होती तो मैं क्यामत के दिन तक आपको इधर छोड़ता सही है नहीं उनको मतलब बड़ी ताकत है अल्लाह के लफ्स में अल्लाह के तो पैगंबरों को भी टेस्ट किया है और आपको दिखाया गया है मेरेकल अल्लाह का मेरेकल जो है एंड दिस बिलीफ इन डिविनिटी इज द रीज़न यू कैन नेवर गिव अप होप एंड इफ़ यू कान गिव अप होप यू कान टेक योर लाइफ बिकॉज as long as you have hope why would you take your life right hmm. and you and hope and patience in the face of zulm is actually what our first jihad is a muslim's jihad yeah. is against zulm and oppression that yeah. is what the muslims were faced with in the beginning hmm. and by the way this didn't come from christians and jews it came from the uh, pagans of uh, buth paras of makkah hmm. and the first shaheeds and the first jihad, whatever jihad was of patience was of not giving up hope was of accepting suffering in the face of your religion and this has happened it happened with uh, musa al islam's people it happened with isa al islam's people it happened with muhammad al islam's people and that's why the three of us are ahle kitab ha ah. right because these three prophets and these three people faced these trials and all three even though musa al islam was a little harder hmm. right but muhammad al-islam was very soft and and isa al-islam was very so, like soft in in that way that they muhammad al-islam never never unhone badwa nahi kabhi kisi ko di jin logon ne un pe zulm bhi kiya na unko unhone hidayat ki unke liye dua mangi ya maafi ki dua mangi aur main aapko aise logon ki baat kar raha hu jinhone un pe kachra phenka unko galiyan di jab makka fata hua tha na तो उसकी आयत है कुरान में और अल्लाह पैगंबर इस्लाम से पूछने क्या तुम्हारी आंखों को ठंडक मिली क्या है उसका मतलब लुक बैक फ्रॉम व्हेन यू स्टार्टेड व्हेन यू ब्रॉट माय वर्ड व्हेन यू ब्रॉट द कलमा एंड दैट लेडी दे टाइड दैट रॉक ऑन हर एंड दे किल्ड हर इन द डेजर्ट एंड नाउ यू वॉक हेयर यू कॉन्कर्ड विदाउट अ सिंगल पर्सन बींग किल्ड यू वॉक एंड दे आर एट योर मर्सी Hmm. They are at your mercy. Hmm. What is your mercy? I forgive you all in the name of Allah. क्या बात है? मतलब ये पैगाम फैलाने का तरीका जो है फिर वायलेंस और इस तरह ऑपरेशन के थ्रू एक तरीका है. Look, more people have died in the name of religion, yeah. uh, whether they're Jewish, whether they're Christian, whether they're Muslim, they all murdered each other, right? Yeah. But all of these religions fundamentally teach you the same thing. which is the concept of the divinity of god's power and the belief in it and compassion towards your fellow human and this is your basic you know the rest of it mm. you know the killing and the murder and the politics and the divisions and all but for me what i love about my religion is that it is in harmony with the other three and it says they are ahle kitab and you are the same people and you but there's bani israel and then the, the you know jesus christ came from there and then muhammad came from here but we are abraham's you know people and they all move from the same and you, you have to respect every religion you have to respect everything and even when we speak about breaking uh, the statues of uh, the makkans at at the time that the prophet broke them he didn't say you cannot worship uh, you know i kill all the stone worshipers there was a political statement behind that because hum hame 
बुत परस्ती के बारे में ना हम लोग बड़े कंफ्यूज हैं हम लोग समझते हैं कि बुत बुत परस्ती है एक्चुअली hmm. इंसान परस्ती को बुत परस्ती कहते हैं बुत एक आर्ट फॉर्म है तुम भी बना सकते हो मैं भी बना सकता हूँ मगर एक इंसान को कन्विंस करना कि इस पत्थर से दुआ मांगो या बारिश आएगी या बच्चा आएगा या शादी होगी या पैसा आएगा इसके पीछे एक बहुत इंटेलिजेंट आदमी हो सकता है सिर्फ सही है और आप गोल्ड भी देते हो आप सोना ये बुत परस्ती है और इसको कहा गया था कि इसको तोड़ो इंसान परस्ती को छोड़ो सो जब वो कहते हैं इंसान का लफ्स छोड़ दो वो यही है इंसान परस्ती छोड़ो इंसान ऑलवेज तुम्हें गुमराह करेगा यू नो सो फॉर मी यू नो दिस दिस जब तुम्हारा एडवर्टिजमेंट जरा ज्यादा लंबा है क्या पर वो यू नो द थिंग अबाउट सुसाइड एंड हाउ डाउन आई वाज एंड हाउ डार्क माय लाइफ वाज एंड एंड लाइक आई वाज टेलिंग यू इन द बिगिनिंग दैट आई एम आई एम अ हैप्पी पर्सन आई एम नॉट अ लोनली पर्सन आई एंजॉय कम पीपल्स कंपनी एंड आई एंड सो फॉर मी टू एक्चुअली फेस दैट चॉइस आई थॉट वेयर हैज माय लाइफ कम हाउ डू यू गो फ्रॉम बीइंग सो हैप्पी to being in such a miserable position that you're mm. like forget it man like let's just close this book mm. it's never going to get better or easier and the pain is the physical pain and you know i always tell people that like physical pain is something you can understand like if you want to understand how i got these marks on my back you can cut yourself <laughs> you know uh, i don't know you can break i had my nails removed with the plas right mm. but i've also lost nails playing football so mm. i know how painful it is when that nail is hanging and they have broken bones I've, you know pain is you can but like loneliness is so difficult to to write about or explain it's such a haunting feeling of like it consumes you this darkness like consumes you and if you have if you're a happy person it's strange it's like you know you're everything that you know is is just crumbling around you and and i used to i still remember i had that blade and i was just sitting there and you can see your the main rag and 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 i just i don't know i just thought like am i going to die in a fucking bathroom in merely with a blade mm. you know like that's how i am going to die and i knew that the next day would not be easier and i knew that the foreseeable future would be even more lonely and depressing and painful and haunting than today this moment that i want to take my life so it's not like i've reached rock bottom is that like i haven't even scratched the surface and that's mm. when i'm already making this choice mm. but like i i i don't know what what happened that day but i just i told myself that like fuck them man you know mm. um i'm not gonna i have to see tomorrow you know and i have to see if it's got something in it for me and i wake up like this every day no matter what happens right and god can take your life anytime mm. that's you know not important but you really have to believe that tomorrow will be a better day like i i can't people go through a lot in their lives and life is hard right but like i always tell this i say this to my friends that one of the great things that i have about having my life back is that i appreciate the hard days i appreciate the good days mm. the off days the monotony but the day you know what i mean mm. that i got it yeah every day is not great you know it's hard mm. relationships are hard work is hard life is hard ups mm. downs all kinds of shit but arrogance i would call it just <laughs> arrogance <laughs> of wanting to see the next day as long as god allows me to see it right mm. i could fall sick and i could die and then that opportunity is in there mm. but as long as i can see that next day i'm not going to take my life somebody else has to take my life right i'm mm. not going to be the guy that's going to do it and i don't know how i actually like i must be very stubborn my friends <laughs> you guys do <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah say he's a bit of a stubborn you know but sometimes you need a little bit of you know stubbornness and a little bit of arrogance i'm glad that i had it about not taking my well, life well you uniquely <laughs> had the tenacity to fight all the adverse circumstances that were kind of presented to you your personality to a certain degree your genetics and and then of course your dad your dad's symbol in front of you as you've mentioned many times that he was in 
uh, solitary confinement and the sort of things that he said during that time that that kind of came to you as well and then the quran um helped you kind of move through it as well um i mean it's, when i'm reading the book there's so many like boy well, serendipitous things all across it that i'm just like this guy was destined to make it out <laughs> even though we were sitting here and you know i was telling you ke mujhe wo tasveer nazar aayi thi tumhari torture ki maryam ke sath hum baithe hue the restaurant pe phir then uh, there was this drone strike they said you're dead and it was all over the news and then um, and then there was radio silence i didn't know it was going on for a long time and i remember like you know those things you, i i remember where i was when september 11th happened yeah. i was at walid zaman's house there was a phadda <laughs> being resolved sad sad segal ka to phadda hua tha aur resolution chal rahi thi i remember i was sitting in my balcony and there was this video we were planning when i i saw this picture of you going like this outside mm. of a uh, i told the photographer <laughs> yeah, I, i walked out of the plane and, I was like, the fuck I'm and the guy was standing right there he was ready to i was like by the way that's the best fucking picture you'll ever take oh, that was <laughs> the he, happiest moment of my life and he got a big too. smile as well i was like i mean seriously let's be honest and then he shook my hand as well he's like sir i think that is the best picture <laughs> <laughs> well i think the world is a better place for for having you back and everything man and uh, so grateful for you sharing your story Oh. No, I, I like the thing is that I love you, bro, and it's just cool to be here and yeah, the, the fact that you true. do all this. And I'm glad you like the book. Like you know, I gave. I love the book, and I think abhi to you just scratched the surface with what you're talking about. But agar log jo dekh rahe hain, they should. Uh, this book is killer. I'm on the twenty fourth chapter. Uh, and by killer, I mean like literally, it's the most depressing thing. So I just a friend of mine just sent me a picture. <laughs> But it keeps you turning the page. Yeah, like, I mean, <laughs> you know, I I tried to write it like uh, I was telling you earlier, like uh, you know how Mohsen Hamid goes into these very descriptive. It, I really I, I don't know if you read Mott Smoke or if you have many books. People, yeah, yeah, yeah. I study. I listen I to his interviews as well. I love the way he explains well. Lahore. How he explained the society in Lahore. It was mm. so like, um, and you know, it was I think as a young adult the first book I read as well. Let's be honest. Um, <clears throat> and and I love Dan Brown. Uh-huh. You know, um, people have different authors. Usually, I think people are lying when they're like, "Who's your favorite?" They're like, "Oh, it's your." Sh- it's probably like Stephen King or Dan Brown right yeah so uh or George Martin do uh, uh, yeah right uh, um <laughs> the but, russian novelists are the best yeah, really. especially when i'm reading it in russian and translating it in french in my mind um, <laughs> then i really enjoy i love it, it. um <laughs> but you know dan brown like when you're reading him you kind of visualize it and i really mm. wanted because it's such an it's so difficult to explain what happened to me mm. um and it's a very lon- like it's a very lonely experience this book it's just like me and you see everything through my eyes and my experience right and i actually had to take the reader into this loneliness into mm. this isolation mm. and it's not easy uh it's not but it's like uh, uh, and any of these horror films where there's someone who comes out alive so there's something life affirming about it like you're <laughs> you're, you're watching you're re- reading it and you know it takes you to a dark place but you can see the light at the end of the tunnel knowing that the guy wrote the book yeah. <laughs> you know and you're like it's life affirming it's even yeah. when in that darkness there's always this bright shining light even when you're describing the pulses of red hot pain that went went through your body every time that pull a, a nail out or you'd be like oh but there's peter you're talking to peter and then you're studying the intricate pattern of that web and you're like oh he's appreciating beauty there is a beautiful thing about the end of this and and i hope everybody gets that life affirming message it's really motivating to you know like our little problems in life are really sized down to what they really are which is nothing really the, these problems are nothing that's what my therapist said so <laughs> 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 um, well, it's been it's been great uh, how many hours do we have oh wow we're good we're good we're good we're good thank you once again all right then fist bump, Good, fist bump. <laughs> oh pew <laughs>